Hey everybody, this is Gary Kay, obviously, and uh, you're, you're uh, looking at a video version of my rants and raves today because I'm going to interview one of my oldest friends in the industry. I didn't mean that as old. I'm an old friend, not old I am person. Old. <laughs> uh, uh, Sam Taylor. Sam Taylor is Executive Vice President at Almo and COO of Almo Corporation. Uh, Sam, how are you? Good. How are you doing today, Gary? Good. Uh, you know, it's, I, I always love talking to people that I've known almost the entire time I've been in the industry. Um, we, we go back a long way. You've always been in one segment of the industry. I've always been in the other side of the industry. So we've always had sort of complementary uh, business ties. Uh, and uh, you sit in a unique place in the industry because you're, you're um, leading uh, one of the, uh, the big distributors in North America, Almo uh, Pro AV. So, and you sell every type of commercial AV product. So what I want to ask you as we enter 2020 here. How are we going to do in 2020? Is this going to be a great year? Is this going to be a questionable year? What do you think? Uh, you know, because we'll talk about technology, but let's talk about the economy and sort of where you see things going. Well, it's funny because uh, I'll be honest, last year at, at the beginning of uh, 2019, I thought we would have a strong first half, but was, uh, I was pretty unsure of the second half and, uh, and uh, I was wrong. I mean, we had a very strong year overall. And uh, this year, I hope I'm not wrong the other way, because I think looking at 2020, it's going to be a strong year throughout. I see just lots of projects, uh, lots, of, lots of, you know, technologies and, and, and categories that we're working on, you know, really with strong growth. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. And, and I come at it from a different perspective. I think that the, the change and the shift in technology and the new product is going to drive a lot of the industry. I think you you look at it from the standpoint of you're talking to all the integrators out there, but you're also you're also looking at it from an economic standpoint. And when orders hit you, you're usually three, maybe two or three months before it actually gets installed into the into the customer's facility. So you have a better vision for sort of what's happening at this moment in time. Where I sit, I see a lot of new technology that's going to drive change. Sort of like the way I guess an analogy I would use is sort of the way Zoom drove change in our industry and then uh, created new markets. I see other companies in our industry doing the same thing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. There's a lot of growth coming. And, and we see it also in our Salesforce pipeline of the, of the large projects and rollouts that are, that are happening. And, uh, you know, one of the really, I mean, digital science has always been really hot for us, continues to be, but uh, the UCC market is really, you know, you mentioned Zoom. Um, and they're one of the big players in that market, uh, and uh, we see that that whole market really taking off. Yeah, we I did a podcast last week with Brian Radigan at Almo uh, Pro AV that he talked about the Zoom Room kits. If you want to listen to that podcast, go to Ray Pubs and just click on the Rave Radio link. You can listen to that because he goes through the details of the kits that uh, that you have. Um, but uh, we we both are familiar, uh, know about a new product coming out at the end of this month that I think is going to actually drive some of the success in the industry for 2020. I don't know if you want to mention it or not. Yeah, so uh, Barco is revealing a new uh, product, uh, 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 new ClickShare uh, at their uh, at an event in, uh, on January 27th in uh, Manhattan. Um, the, the details of that event are on our website, almoproav.com. Um, but uh, I'll be there for that. I'm really excited. I got a sneak peek at the product. Can't say much about it other than I think it's going to be basically a revolutionary product uh, for for this industry, and uh, I'm really excited about it. Well, Barco certainly has been the leader in the uh, in the wireless sharing segment of the industry, and this product will will put them into a different segment of the industry as well, a bigger player in a different segment of the industry. I don't want to talk about it either, but I could tell you uh, it's definitely going to be an event that a lot of people are going to, if you're in the New York area, obviously, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., all the way through from one to the other, uh, it's something you should consider going to. If you go to, I guess it's on your website at almoproav.com, Sam? Yes. Yeah, yes, and you can is. register there for the event? Yes, there's a link there to, uh, to register. Okay. Yeah. So that'd be something to see. Now I want to shift a little bit. Um, so we, we talked about collaboration. We talked about digital science a little bit. Where do you see the display industry? I mean, if, if we went back five years ago, uh, you know, all the pundits in the industry were crying that the projector industry, the projector segment of the market was going to die a rapid death due to the fact that we now had large format LCDs. 
that hasn't happened. And then they, then they said LEDs were going to kill projectors. That hasn't happened. I just went to Disney World last a couple of weeks ago. Projectors are all, if, if it wasn't for projectors, they'd have no entertainment right now because it's all projection. Um, where do you see the projector fitting into the classroom, the meeting room, the boardroom, and sort of the spaces that it fits into now? Because obviously for image mapping and large format, we know the projector is going to survive. But even meeting rooms, classrooms, boardrooms, I see projectors being put in there because they serve a, an interesting purpose and, it, and have, a, have a unique sort of way of displaying content because when you turn a display off, it's just a black rectangle. So I see both of them co existing, but you're closer to that industry. What do you think? So um, I would say in, in the smaller format uh, uh, and lower lumens projectors, they, they're challenged, but that's not the market that, we, that we're addressing. You know, we, we work with the integrators that are doing higher ed and uh, some of the, like you talked about the mapping and the uh, image mapping and uh, and we just see, we see that market really growing. And, and overall, our, our projector business is growing. So uh, the display business is growing faster, but the projector business is still over the past five years has grown for us at a pretty nice clip. Um, again, I think, if you were focused in the you know sub 5000 lumen uh uh projector space um you know that that's been challenged but even in that space there's there's places for for uh projectors because uh, if you're putting if you're putting uh text and stuff on a on a large format format lcd you got to make sure it's sized right that it can actually be read it, you know it certainly can be viewed but you know people that want to put up Excel spreadsheets and things like that. Uh, it's a, that that's a different uh, uh, animal there. So it kind of depends on what you're doing with it. But so, I think. Go ahead. I say, uh, you know, the, the the category that we see explosive growth in this year is is the LED uh, category, and uh, I think that uh, you know the prices are are coming down uh, really quickly. Um, and I think that the, the, the traditional video wall, uh, you know, where you towel three by threes, two by threes, whatever you are together that has the, has the mullion in between, that's going to get really challenged, uh, as, as LEDs, uh, as LEDs continue to bring, you know, the price per square foot down. So that's, we're seeing, we're seeing projects, uh, some bigger projects that would have went, uh, would have went uh, video wall going to LED now. Who are your favorite LED brands? I mean, cause you handle everybody. Who are the one? where do you see the big traction? Uh, which brands you see the biggest traction? <laughs> um, well, we we're, we're getting traction with a lot of different brands. Uh, um, uh, it's hard. I, I hate to say, you know, uh, pick a few because then I get a I get a call from somebody afterwards. <laughs> how come I wasn't on that list? So, um, but so I'd rather not say specifically. If anybody wants my opinion, they can call me afterwards. But um, there's we have we have uh, we have one brand that, that's very unique, and I think that's uh, going to drive a lot of uh, business. But we have some other brands that are you know household names that are really good good offerings it, it's interesting because uh all the projector companies now have leds with with the exception of one or two they all have led products so in a way they're all sort of hedging their bets either direction and they can't lose um and, and a company like you know let's take a look at a company like samsung i mean they have they've they've built their business in our market on the flat panel display world and now obviously they have a huge uh, LED uh, wall business, and they just purchased uh, Prism View in the last year. So, so now they have indoor and outdoor LED. So you can you can uh, hire them to do an entire stadium for you inside the suites, all the way through the large uh, displays on the end zones. Uh, but then there's companies like like uh, you know there's small LED companies out there that have emerged, like Layard and and Absin and companies like that that are just LED companies that are, are doing a uh, big business as well. So I, I, I agree with you that, that certainly LED is going to have an impact on the market. I want to shift a little bit and uh, talk about the audio uh, part of the market. About two years ago, uh, y'all did something kind of uh, that surprised everybody, uh, refocused your attention on the oldest technology in our industry, the A and AV audio with the sound options team. And I think that, uh, a lot of people 
thought that was not a good idea. And interestingly enough, I did a webinar uh, some a couple of years ago. Where I did a bunch of research, actually for you guys. Actually, come to think of it, um, on uh, on and and I found out that that audio technology is more profitable than video technology. Video gets all the glitz and glamour, but audio is more profitable. But here we are with UCC spaces and classrooms where all of a sudden there's a big difference between hearing and understanding. And now audio is taking a front seat with some new brands that are out there. Uh, I think your timing was really good. So I don't know if that was your genius or someone else's, but where do you see the sort of your focus on the oldest technology in our industry? Well, it's been a very uh, nice, strong growing category for us uh, since we, you know, since we launched the sound options uh, and uh, you know, it's, we, we have a, a really good lineup of uh, high-end audio vendors and uh, that we can pretty much uh, solve just about any, any problem or any opportunity we can, you know, whether it's, whether it's huddle rooms, large conference rooms, you know, large meeting spaces, um, we, we can do that. Yeah. yeah. And you've got, you have some, you have some unique brands. I mean, obviously you carry all the big brands everyone else carries. But you also have a couple of brands uh, that no one else has. Eckler's one that comes to mind. Eckler's kind of interesting because they're sort of a hybrid between a brand that is really consumer focused, not consumer as an end user, but consumer as an user focused, but also has a lot of commercial AV functionality to it in the sense that they have, for example, a product I really like. They have a speaker phone or speaker product that you put a, a mic array speaker product that you put in the conference room, but also you can connect to it through Bluetooth ad hoc. Uh, so uh, it's it's a professional product, but also has consumer connectivity functionality. Um, I, I, do you see that kind of hybrid driving uh, some of the adoption in 2020, or is that just sort of a one-off thing? No, I think I mean every situation is different and unique, and the the more uh, you know, the more. Uh, offerings that you can have that can solve things like that, uh, you know, or provide opportunities for the end user to to have different experiences with it. Like you just mentioned the Bluetooth. So, I mean, that's a, that's a, you know, that's a great option that they built, Eckler's built in. And, uh, you know, Eckler is a big name in Europe and uh, they weren't here in the U.S. So we're happy that they selected us as their exclusive distributor and to bring, to bring the product into the U.S. And, uh, it's it's great product. People who hear it love the sound quality, but they also there's you know there's also the business side of 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 it too. You pretty much everyone I'll say every one of our partners is making that we're partner with makes great sounding audio, and but there's also you have to have the, the right business case so that you can make margin and uh, the integrator can be profitable with the products and and that there's solutions that may be unique that help differentiate the that product uh, and why it would go into a certain situation. Yeah, I, I, I've uh, been fortunate to have a pretty close relationship with not just you personally, but also Almo Pro AV since the very beginning. Um, and uh, 2020 will kick off, I think, the 11th year of the E4 experience, uh, which is a uh, which is a combination of a trade show and a, and a uh, highly targeted educational experience. Uh, the, in the 2019 uh, year, you, you had the opportunity to earn up to 12 CTS credits by attending the E4 experience. All that is on the e4experience.com website. Uh, I want to thank uh, Sam for that relationship and also for being part of the E4 experience. I've really enjoyed that. Um, and and, and I, what I want to commend you for is that um, although I know you're, you know, we are too, in the business to make money, you're also driving a lot of the educational adoption in the industry. And, and as, as probably as an organization, I would probably, besides Avixa, probably you've, you have given out more CTS credits than any other single organization in the, in, in the United States. Uh, in the last 10 years. So I, I think I'd be surprised if there was somebody else that did that because there's thousands of people attending that every year and there's thou uh, tens of thousands of uh, CTSs going out. So I know that that's a big, uh, uh, I know that's something that you wanted to mention in this uh, video cast. Yeah, well, I'm very proud of the, uh, and I don't have the exact number here, but it it is, uh, it's it's staggering over 10 years how many CTS renewal units that we've that we've issued and uh, I I can't think of anybody else that would even be in the same ballpark as the amount of CTS renewal units that we've that we've uh, issued 
and I've always been a big proponent of, of CTS uh, and supporting Avixa and prior when it was known as Infocom. Um, you know, I've always uh, we have a sales force that have we have a high percentage of our folks with CTS. Our business development managers have their CTS certifications. We've got a couple CTSDs. We have CTSI here. So I'm a strong believer in educating our internal people, but also providing free quality education to our integrators because the ones that stay up and stay educated and they're the integrators that are going to be in business for the long haul. Well, I, I look, I really appreciate you joining me on today's video cast. I want to encourage everyone to check out almoprov.com if you don't know who they are. I'm pretty sure they do. Uh, but uh, there's some really cool new partnerships that you have coming in 2020. I know you don't want to talk about them specifically, one that we talked about this morning. Uh, and, and so I think there's a lot of cool things coming in 2020. And um, I'm excited about the 2020 E4 experience. I have an all new keynote that's going to talk about the impact of millennials and Generation Z having a bigger uh, piece of the control, uh, a, a bigger part of controlling our market and uh, impacting how we design systems for our customers. Uh, that's going to be the subject of my, uh, of, of my uh, keynote. I've been testing it out with some small audiences over the last few months. It's been very uh, well received. I'm excited to be part of the E4 experience. So you can check that out at e4experience.com. Four tour dates are already online. Uh, Sam Taylor, thanks for joining me this morning, and uh, thanks for all you've done for the industry. Well, thank you, Gary, and uh, you have a great day. I appreciate you uh, having me on. Well, thank you, everyone. And of course, uh, we'll all be heading to ISE in a couple of weeks. Uh, so if you want to meet me or, or uh, Sam at, uh, at, uh, at ISE, just, just um, contact us. Uh, we'll be at ISE. All of our ISE coverage is at raypubs.com slash ISE 2020. Thanks for watching.